Hello, hello. Welcome. Come on in. I'm Anne. This is The Lonely Outsider. And I'm so excited to be with you today and share with you as much as possible in one hour as I can about this topic that interests me very much. Really, the main reason it interests me is that it's been such an issue for me. And I have often felt like an oddball in my life, like an outsider. I, I've often been in a group and felt I don't belong here and protected myself from that in one way or another, either by denying those feelings and pretended that I belonged, which usually means that I was like super cheerful and ha 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 instead of just allowing myself to be present as myself, or I would just escape, you know, or not even show up like, oh, my, my friend who doesn't share many friends in common with me is having a party. I'm invited to the party. Forget about it. You know, I don't belong there. I won't be there. And it's actually been a wonderfully rewarding, enriching experience for me to acknowledge and explore those feelings, those feelings of being an oddball, an outsider, and not belonging. So I wanted to share with you that today because it also, to me, connects with the kind of world I'd like to live in. And we'll get to that in a while. But it's just thrilling to me that that you are here. Uh, let me uh, share my screen with you. And for those of you who are calling in by phone and you can't see the shared screen, I will be telling uh, everything that I show on the screen. <clears throat> so welcome to The Lonely Outsider, exploring issues of belonging and identity. I'm Ann Weiser Cornell. I'm the president and CEO of Focusing Resources. I'm the co-creator of Inner Relationship Focusing, along with my beloved colleague, Barbara McGavin. And my latest book is Presence, a guide to transforming your most challenging emotions. And for you to participate in this webinar, uh, if you are on the Zoom platform, as most of you are, you can use the chat feature to share your responses and ask questions. And just feel free to do that. Also, I would love it if you, when you do that, you would select panelists and all participants. That means that everyone here will see what you write. And I think that'll give us a nice feeling of being in a group together, belonging, right? What helps us feel like we're belonging? To feel like we can relate to what other people are saying. That's one of many, one of many ways. So if you, Leave it at panelists, which is the default. I will be the only one who sees it. That's okay, you can do that. Or select panelists and all participants. And if you want to speak at some point, you can say so in the chat or raise your hand. Right now, I'm the only one who can be seen and heard. But that's the webinar format. But you can have your voice be heard using the chat and if you'd like to be able to speak for a little while, just let me know, we'll let you speak, and that would be lovely too. <clears throat> Excuse me a moment. Okay. So to give you a, oh yes, I'd like to start by asking you these questions. And maybe you just wanted to take these questions inside, or you might even want to write in the chat what comes for you. So I was wondering, do you ever feel lonely even when you're with other people? Yeah? And what about this? Are you often the one in a group who feels left out or not really belonging? That's an interesting question. To me, that means I often feel like I'm not belonging or I used to. And if I do, I often feel like I'm the only one. And that could be really a misperception. It could be lots of people in the group are feeling like the way I do, but how would we know? I, the feeling that is connected to probably earlier life experiences is I'm the only one who feels odd here. 
they all are comfortable. They all belong. I'm the one who don't do. And do you ever feel that way? Like, I'm the one who doesn't belong. They all feel comfortable. Yeah. I see a couple people wrote in the chat, and I love that. I'm going to come back and look at what you wrote in a minute. Um, here's some other questions for you to sense as we start our webinar. Two things. Do you hide the ways that you're different from other people, right? You, I'm sure you feel different from other people somehow. Do you hide that? You feel like you need to hide it? You'd better hide it? Better hide my differences? Or, or do you feel like you defiantly flaunt your differences, right? I'm different and heck with you, you know? In, in the town I grew up in, I grew up in a very small town, and it felt like the rule was be like other people or else, you know, be like others uh, or you're really wrong. And the, this was enforced by mockery. So in, 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 on the playground, in the schoolroom, I had to dress the way other kids did. There were, there were even rules about what colors to wear, what colors not to wear. And, or, yeah, uh, uh, right? Look at Anne. So I learned to hide the ways I was different. I felt the ways I was different were wrong. But later, a little later, there was a time when I defiantly flaunted my differences. I still felt like I was wrong, but I didn't want to hide it anymore. And I found some other people who felt like outsiders and we could team up with each other. So is that similar to something that's happened for you? Or does it remind you of something that's happened for you? So if you ever feel like an oddball or an outsider, or if do I belong is ever an issue for you, then you are in the right place right now. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? I love that. I'm going to come back and uh, see what people have been writing. Jonathan, very familiar feeling. Diane, I often feel like I don't belong in groups and they all seem to belong. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and somebody who's chuckling, never, right? Mm -hmm. I used to, yeah, often. Both. So that would have been both hiding the ways you're different and defiantly flaunting the ways you're different. I'm sure that's what the both was about. And both depending on the group and my mood, both it depends. And I often hold back from performing at my best. Yes, 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 yes. Very good, very good. Interesting, interesting that it can be both, right? Both at different times, both with different groups. And yet both, we're gonna see, that both um, hiding our differences and defiantly flaunting our differences, both are linked to a traumatic stoppage, to some way that what really should have happened didn't get to happen for us. I, I dare to say what should have happened. You'll hear me talk about that in a minute. Today in this webinar, I'm gonna take you to take you through two thoughtful exercises where you'll have a chance to really sense into these questions. Uh, and we have someone right, even at the age 79, I still avoid social situations. And if I can't avoid them, I hide when I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm gonna go back to my presentation here and talk about what we're doing today. So today, we're gonna to do three things. We're gonna talk a little bit about which kind of outsider you are, a rebel or a compromiser. Although from all the people who said both, I don't think this is gonna be an either or choice. I think it's gonna be a discovery of what each of those styles is like. And also, we're gonna spend some time getting in touch with the life energy that got blocked when you had to rebel or compromise, right? Either one, rather than 
be welcomed as yourself, right? So being welcomed as yourself is what probably would have been really right. Probably what your body would have wanted to happen is I, I, I'm welcome. I'm welcome as myself. I don't have to jump through hoops or follow rules. There are no entry requirements for being a human being who belongs in this world. But that isn't the experience of many of us. So what happened when we had to rebel and or compromise? There's life energy that gets blocked when that happens. And we're gonna get in touch with that whole process. And there's gonna be something also about inviting back the parts of you that have gotten exiled. Exiled by the longing to belong or by some other part of what happened, okay? So <laughs> let's start with this question of the rebel and the compromiser. Actually, uh, these are not types of people, but here are some, uh, I've just put up on the screen some cultural symbols for rebels and compromisers. But this is a process that, many of us engaged in, uh, both of them are processes, rebelling and compromising, in order to survive the situations we were in, in order to hold on to as much as possible of our individuality and our feeling of connection. So individuality and connection should not be at odds with each other. And in the, in the place I grew up, Mount Carroll, Illinois, population 2000, it often felt like individuality and connection were at odds with each other. I could either fit in, shutting aside parts of myself, or I could uh, be seen as the odd one and uh, really, be gossiped about, talked about, uh, et cetera. So I, I would like, I would have liked, right? As I look back, wouldn't it have been great if I could have been uniquely myself and accepted? And frankly, there were some times when that happened. Yeah, Like my, I love to write plays and I had one of my teachers, I think the eighth grade teachers, said I could sit out in the hall and write plays while other people were working on English assignments. Uh, and and I, everybody accepted that and that was fine. So once I get past sort of the trauma states of, oh my gosh, I just wasn't accepted ever, I start to remember. Well, frankly, there were some times when I was different and I was accepted, but it's, it's the other times that stay with me with pain. And there is a healing process for the pain that we went through. It's that pain that gets triggered for me, even now, even now sometimes when I'm in a group where I'm not sure I belong. Some part of me is a child again on the playground. So let's ask you some exploring questions, but. We're gonna also do an exercise about this in a minute. So if you gave up on being loved and belonging as yourself and instead went defiantly your own way, that would have been rebelling. Yeah, so you wanted to, you wanted to be yourself and be loved, but that wasn't possible. I'm guessing that's what happened to me. And if you gave up on being loved and instead went defiantly your own way, that's that rebel quality. But on the other hand, if you gave up on your own uniqueness, you want to hide my uniqueness, hide the ways I'm different, and instead you went along with the crowd in order to belong, that's a compromiser style. Yeah, we had this choice. We shouldn't have to have a choice, but we had a choice, many of us. We chose one way, sometimes we choose the other way. 
maybe at different times and in different situations, you did both. Maybe there's both a rebel and a compromiser in you right now. Maybe they fight each other. Yeah. And maybe being a rebel or being a compromiser or both left you feeling odd. Yeah. And not and left out and, and knowing something was missing, knowing something's not right about this. So here are some of the things that happened for me and people I know, you know, that feeling of people, gangs of people laughing at me and uh, or just feeling lonely and alone, like I didn't have any friends or this is similar to the first one, right? feeling I'm too something for them, too smart or don't have nice clothes the way I'm supposed to. So what happened? Were we, did we have experiences when we were younger that are painful? And what should have happened? What should have happened? So let's do an exercise. And we'll get in touch with some of what happened and some of what should have happened. Yeah, I see some people are writing in the chat. Compromised rebel, and yes, that's a great way to put it, yeah, yeah. I always, I always found a way to go my way, but I was not defiant. Okay, yeah, all right. Does anybody else want to say something or write in the chat before we do a little exercise where we get in touch with this experience of not belonging, some of the sources of that in what may have happened. It's very interesting because what I'm talking about is experiences right now of being an oddball and an outsider and not belonging. Like I have a group where I go right now, where I'm not the leader, I'm, I'm, it's a peer group and we, take turns giving presentations to each other. When I first joined that group four years ago, I, I often had feelings of wanting to run out of the room. They don't like me. They like each other, but they don't like me. And when I spent time with those feelings, that took me back to the early times in my life, to the, to the playgrounds of my childhood. And something there needed to be acknowledged and even healed. And then, the group in the current time became much friendlier to me. Yeah? They weren't actually friendlier, but they sure felt friendlier. Yes, yes. So other people are writing. I often feel like I've lived two or more lives at the same time. Is that the compromiser and the rebel? Yeah. So the feeling of not belonging in my family, yeah. So for me, it was the playground. But you know what? I felt that way in my family too. Uh, I'm, I don't fit or I, it doesn't, I'm not like them or they don't like me. So it's not just in social situations. It can be in our very own family. And that might happen even now. Anna writes, I often expect not to belong. Someone wrote, I feel such deep shame I feel like I'm not either a rebel or a compromiser, but if I have to show up, I'm definitely a compromiser. Yeah. yeah. And somebody says, I, I think often something in me is afraid that being myself is not okay. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Being myself is not okay. But we're trying to find ways to pull a little more of me out. Oh, that's lovely. Yes. That's nice. Uh, and then they don't like me. <laughs> I, was, I was quoting myself, they don't like me. You can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. 
passive aggressive is passive aggressive sort of rebel and compromiser yeah i think maybe that maybe it is yeah uh, uh there must be something wrong with me that i don't feel comfortable in this group exactly but the opposite could be true too right i don't feel comfortable in this group so they're all you know label right uh we can do either one but it both spring from hurt, right? Both are not what we would really hope would happen. Yeah, yeah. When I try to belong by being just like others, I inevitably fail, exactly, exactly. That, in fact, both of these strategies, if we can say that rebelling and compromising are strategies and all the different ways people are talking about combining the two, the reason they always fail is that they're always partial. Like they help us survive, they help us stand it, they protect us maybe from repeating past painful experiences, but there's something that they don't get for us. So they'll always fail. Great. Wow, I love how much people are sharing. Thank you so much for that. Let's do an exercise. Okay. I'm just going to uh, put, put something up on the screen uh, to signify that we're doing an exercise. <laughs> so uh, take your time. This is going to be maybe um, 10 minutes. Take your time to settle in, maybe where you're sitting, to feel the contact of your body and what you're sitting on. We start by feeling our resources, right? I can feel my body, feel my body in contact with what I'm sitting on, feel my feet, feel the other places where my body's in contact. And what I like to say is, I am here. So you may be having feelings arise as we do this exercise, you may be having memories arise, and you are the one who can welcome and be with those feelings and those memories. So I am here, I welcome the memories and the feelings that have to do with belonging. Okay, let's, let me talk, but let me talk you through it, okay? I was just, just giving you a little reinforcement for being the big self, we call it self in presence. So as you feel your body in contact with what you're sitting on now, also feel your breathing. And also be aware in the inner area of your body. So being aware in the inner area that includes your throat, your chest, your stomach, your belly, just arriving within yourself. And, and for some people, your body right now feels kind of blank or like there's nothing there. And for other people, you're already aware of emotional states or even painful feelings in your body. And that's all okay. And if you are feeling something painful or strong in your body, let a gentle hand move to the place in your body where you're feeling something. And like you're saying, I am here. And I'd like you to use this language. I recommend this language. I'm sensing something in me is feeling and then whatever it's feeling. Some of you are not feeling something strong. I'm speaking now to those who are. I am sensing something in me feeling tight, <clears throat> I'm sensing something in me feeling sad, right? Excuse me a moment. I'm sensing something in me feeling overwhelmed and I'm putting a gentle hand there and I'm saying I'm here with you, okay? So 
So I'm going to start with what I believe should have happened, the birthright of all beings. That when you came into this world, you would have been welcomed for your uniqueness. You would have been met by smiles of delight, something like, wow, look who's here. How great. Yeah. Or maybe we can imagine coming into a group of any kind and having people turn to the door when you open it and have their faces light up. Wow, look who got here. Hey. And I'm saying that should have happened, but I don't know what reaction comes in you when you hear that kind of story. It might be that that's painful to, to imagine. Or it might be that it brings up memories of times when it didn't happen that way. Okay, so I am sensing something in me painful. I am sensing something in me has memories of it not happening that way. Whatever is here, we have a big welcome for it. But I think it's really important that it comes against the backdrop of how every one of us is different, unique, let's say. We are all unique. And we all belong as members of the human community and the, the community of all life. So your uniqueness and your belonging, they're true. Well, just pausing to notice what comes, what comes when you try on the idea that what you, what your what the cells of your body expected when you came into this world or when you came into this room was to be welcomed with delight. That might feel good. If it feels good, yay, let's just soak it in. And if it brings up maybe the sadness that about how that didn't happen, well, that too is something that's welcome. The sadness is welcome, might bring anger in some people. And you would say, I'm sensing something in me. Let a gentle hand go there. Make room for any feelings that are here about all that. This is part of the healing journey that's connected to belonging. Who am I and do I belong? So for each of you, it's different. I know for some of you, you're probably feeling, wow, that's a wild idea. Imagine a world in which I'm both unique and I belong. You might have had many experiences like that or just a few. I just finished a workshop, a week long workshop where at the end, I really feel like everybody felt both unique and belonging and looked around the room and could see the uniqueness in each person there, we were all so different from each other, and yet we made one whole group. We made a wholeness together. That should have happened. It's a funny use of the word should. I don't mean should as in morally right. I mean it's something more like we should breathe, we should digest our food, we should feel our unique selves in a world of belonging. It's what's meant to be. 
organismically. Let me give you a little more time where I'm not just talking, where you can pause and sense what's here, what this brings up for you. If you feel, if it feels good, you enjoy the good feeling. If it brings up feelings of hurt, then you turn toward the parts of you that are carrying the hurt. And you say to them, I know you're there. I'm here with you now. Compassion for the places that carry the hurt. And notice how it feels to do that. So we'll bring this exercise to a gentle completion in a minute. We, we're gonna do a second exercise and we'll be able to come back to this again. But for now, thanking your body, thanking your process, whatever happened for you is just right. coming back, being aware of the room around you. As you let your eyes come naturally open, you also may want to make a few notes for yourself about what came there. Just write in the chat how that was for you, what you noticed, what you became aware of. What is it like to bring in the idea that we belong and we're unique. And there are many, many places where that doesn't happen. And yet, we always knew that's what would have been right. Ah, Kate writes, nice to connect with the feeling, memory, and idea of complete acceptance. Yay, wonderful. It's a wild idea. I love to imagine not just imagine, I want to help create a world where the life energy in every person is honored. You know, we, we, I, I know I love stories of people who stepped out, uh, who created something unique. So it isn't always easy to be different, but that's the world as we have it now. The world should be welcoming of these differences. I sense, yeah, here we go. Here's some more people sharing. Uh, I noticed I judged the quote unquote bad feelings I had and then judged myself for judging them. Oh, yeah. Well, say hello to the part that judges you for judging them. And then say hello to the quote unquote bad feelings. Hello, I know you're there. And we can stop that cycle of judgment by just at some point be, being compassionate. Something is worried that if I have those bad feelings, something bad will happen. Imagine being opening the door and everyone turns to me. What came up is feeling afraid of not being able to deal with people's expectations. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, I thought that wouldn't just be joyful for everybody. How interesting. Yeah. So something there to explore. I found a lot of resistance to the idea that I belong. Ah, so curious about that. Yeah. Sadness about the resistance to the idea that I belong. I wonder if that for you is like it is for me that if I belong, I have to be like others. I have to cut out parts of myself. I have to compromise. I have to, I have to live up to expectations. It, it's really hard if we haven't lived that way to imagine it. I sense that quote unquote excluded people often find connect and resonate with each other. That's pretty nice, isn't it? Uh, the rebels find each other, the oddballs find each other. We're the best people too, aren't we? Mm. Feeling of sadness overcame me as I connected with the feeling of lack of acceptance. Yeah, yeah. 
that needs your attention too. Something in me had a hard time even doing the exercise. Yeah, good for you for noticing that. I discovered I didn't want to be accepted because I so identify myself as being unloved and unwanted. Who would I be if I were accepted? Very good point. This is also about identity. What, who am I, right? Because it's very common to find identity through groups and even to name our identity by the groups we belong to. You know, I'm a Californian, right? Uh, or I'm a focusing teacher. Who, but is that really who I am? Identity is an exploration. And it's such an interesting exploration to, to wonder, where does my identity come from? Where would I like it to come from? Aware of feeling some pleasure, knowing some of that was from being welcomed, and shivers at the back of my skull. Wow, nice, interesting. Uh, realized because my mother was depressed, she couldn't be welcoming. I'm so sorry that happened. Sounds like you're forgiving or compassionate. She would have wanted to welcome you if she wasn't depressed. And you should have been welcomed. Your body was ready to be welcomed, as all babies are. Sometimes I feel proud to not belong. Yeah. Well, depends on what it is you feel proud to not belong to. Huh? That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I hold I belong in any group I approach and surprise saddened if they don't accept me. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, let me, oh, I love this sharing and I hope you can all keep reading that. Um, very nice. So just a little more about what your body knows about what should have happened, yeah? That's the previous exercise. But it's big, right? We can go on exploring that for a long time. What should have happened, I think, is that you would never have had to doubt that you were loved and that you belonged as you are. What should have happened I think, is that your differences would have been enjoyed and drawn on instead of ignored or mocked. I, I hope that didn't happen to you, but it did happen to me, and it happened to many of us, that our differences were ignored or mocked. It would be how it should have been, that our differences would be enjoyed and drawn on. Oh, you know how to do this. Would you do this? Oh, thank you. You're so lovely. Love it that you know how to do that. And other people would have been interested in your views and feelings. Boy, that didn't happen for me. But it should have happened. It can still happen. It's not too late. Okay. Let's go to what I call the impossible choice. <laughs> Just zooming forward here. So the impossible choice. Uh, is something that many of us were faced with when we were very young. And, and I, again, I'm speaking for myself here, and I, I think I speak for others as well. You could check if this fits for you. Will I be myself or will I be loved and accepted? This is an impossible choice. We should never have had to choose. You see what I'm saying? We should never have had to choose between being ourselves and being loved and accepted. That's what all this about the rebel and compromiser is about. That if we had to choose, sometimes we chose to be ourselves as the rebel, sometimes we chose to be loved. And, you know, I got the message, especially from my dad. Uh, he didn't even say this, of course, but it's had to do with the ways he paid attention to me, the times he paid attention to me, what he paid attention to me for, I got the message that when I was both most being myself, as far as I could tell, that's when he was busy, right? He was turned away. And then there were certain things that he approved of, like if I was uh, a good student, and then I could get his love and approval. So. It was conditional love and approval. And that's, and you know, it's nice that I got some of, 
some love and approval, but look what happened. Sides of me began to feel exiled. Like I, the full me is not supposed to live in the world. To be that, I have to give up on being loved. Well, that's the journey we had, and it's an interesting journey. And it may be that there's trauma there, right? We should never have to choose between being loved and being ourselves. So here's what I'm saying, and see if this fits for you. To be rejected by other people is a trauma. To have parts of ourselves rejected by other people is a trauma. Yeah? To have my more loony, goofy, expressive sides rejected by my father was a trauma but and hiding and rejecting parts of ourselves so that we'll not be rejected by others is another trauma and let's say we didn't hide but we came from the hurt place and thought we had to be defiant rebels so it's very interesting right I, there's a lot here to explore. I'm very excited by what all you've been sharing. I hope you're in my class so we can really talk about it instead of just writing chats to each other. So did you have to face an impossible choice to be yourself or be loved? Or, or does your, maybe you had a, an impossible choice that feels a little different from that. So, and, and I was talking earlier uh, about responding to uh, Tate, who wrote, it, all, it always fails, exactly. The part that tries everything to be accepted, it's always gonna fail. Because what we mean by acceptance is that it would come without us having to reshape ourselves, remold ourselves, cut out parts of ourselves, hide parts of ourselves. That's what acceptance would be. And so it always fails when we do all those things. So the tragedy of that. And yet it was the best we can do. Yeah? So the life force can, I want to appreciate and have enjoyment, celebration, for how the life force stayed alive. Whatever you did so that you kept your uniqueness alive is wonderful. I'm just saying it also hurt if you were in that kind of situation. So then maybe another part of us rebels, it defies, it's, well, then I'll be myself and be lonely. Yeah? But the trouble is that doesn't completely work either. as you know. So here's what I propose. Here's what I'd like for you to do. And let's do that together for about five minutes. We're going to acknowledge these two parts without being caught up in them. Yeah? Because all of this, right, all of this stuff we're talking about can lead to the persistent feeling of not belonging. And the persistent feeling of not belonging can lead us to something inside us that needs to be heard and is waiting to live. So let's just take a few minutes. I'm gonna put my exercise symbol up on the board again. And let's take a few minutes just to pause and sense inside. Still feel your body supported by what you're sitting on. Still feel your breathing, there it is. Bringing your awareness into the inner area of your body, your throat, your chest, your stomach, your belly, and resting there. And remember, you are the space in which all your feelings and experiences are okay. And they can be as they are. I am the space. And it might be that because of our discussions today, you're already feeling something. Maybe tender or 
hurting or sad. Some of you have already written in the chat that you had sad feelings come up. I would welcome you to take time right now to be with the something in you that has those feelings. And let me say that another way. If you use this language, something in me feels sad, hurting, judged, right? Whatever the feeling is, say something in me feels. And it could be that for some of you, this is numb, right? Like it might sound odd, but numb is actually a feeling. It's a felt experience as well. So something in me feels numb. Or something in me feels angry. Just taking some time to turn toward what all this brings up for you. And I'm going to give you one more invitation. You could follow this invitation or just keep staying with what is here already. And the invitation is, is there something in me that feels like it's been exiled? Is there something in me that feels like it's had to wait out in the cold? It's not like I can be in this room, but that part of me has to stay out, outside, exiled. Let's just like, like, let's not answer the question with our head. Let's come into the body and sense what comes there because you may feel like a tiny little scratching on your door, right? So let's pause now. Is there something in me that's been exiled? Is there something in me that felt like it didn't have a right to be, to live, to be here? And if you feel there's something like that, give it some space right now. You can be beginning a relationship with that part of you that felt like it had to be exiled. Very exciting. So go slowly, go slowly. This is, this is a big deal. And I know you can do it. And all you need to do is say, I am here with you, right? I sense the exiled one and I am, I'm here with it. You can put your hand on the place in your body where you feel it or your hand on your heart if you don't actually feel it in your body yet. I am here with you. And you take your time. Coming back, thanking your body. Come back slowly, come back honoring whatever you felt in this exercise. This, whatever you felt and whatever you feel, you can be the welcome for it. You can give your own feelings the kind of welcome that you always deserved. And that, mean, and that includes the part that's judging the feelings because it's worried about something. It's welcome too. And this is something to practice, something to return to. 
We're going to be posting the recording of this webinar so you'll be able to hear it again, try these things again. I also welcome you to, to, to write to me if you want to, if things came up that you'd like to tell me about or get my support with. Hearing, hearing from some people saying belonging in my family meant don't have any strong emotions. Hmm, interesting. Robert wrote, to be loved in my family meant to not cause trouble or worry. Conditional love, just like in my family, yeah. Yeah, so interesting, yeah. Hmm, hmm. Someone is asking if the chat comments get posted. Uh, do you want them to be or not? I would not, I, I'm not gonna post the comments, but the recording includes my reading some of them. Uh, if anybody would, would like the chat, you can write and ask me for that, but I'd rather not post them. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Donal is writing the exile is like I pulled back and withdrew my energy. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else want to tell us how it was? I guess we're almost at our ending time. I so appreciate how much you shared. Very good. Wow. Well, as I said, do feel free to write to me. I'm and at focusingresources.com. Uh, this is, the, obviously there's a lot of richness to explore. And I look forward to supporting you in that in whatever way works. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Bye everybody. Thank you so much. Bye sweeties. Take care. <laughs>